Okay, everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Radical Relationship Relief Bootcamp, our first training video. Seek the symmetry in whatever upsets you. Key one of the six keys to dependent peace and delicious connection. I am right now in the student union at the University of Maryland. I brought my daughter here late on, on Saturday night after a wedding shower, and I've had so much trouble with my Mac this week that I hadn't been able to record this video, and I was going to do this for you guys come hell or high water because there's actually an assignment in it that I would love for you to do before our first call. Now, if you actually can't do it before the first call, that's okay because we'll make it work. We're going to do a little meditation during the call as well that will allow you to do it. But it would be best if you could watch this little video and um, we'll just walk you through the um, first part, the first happiness hack of Seek the Symmetry. We have another video that is about the six keys to dependable peace and delicious connection that will help you understand kind of the cycle that um, we don't always take everything in order when we're evolving ourselves and using what upsets us, um, but it does sort of have a little bit of an order to it and i've been i've been sorting that out myself and that's what's showing up in the six keys to dependable peace so we have another video that is going to help you um, see all of that but this video is just about the key one seek the symmetry in whatever upsets you and it's actually a screen share video so i'm going to switch over to sharing my screen now with you and that that works and i really look forward to seeing you on the call where we will continue with this and i'll actually come back at the end and tell you the little assignment like what you can be doing with the little exercise that we do on this call so i look forward to seeing you at the end and i'm going to set up my screen share right now Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see this okay. And that screen share thing should disappear in a minute, but maybe not. I think if I move it up to the top, it'll go away in a moment. Um, there it is. All right, so let me actually make this slideshow a little bigger for you to see. Um, ah, let's see. I'm sorry about this. This is my first um, slideshow. Okay. From the beginning. Okay. Oh, look, it's going without me. <laughs> so you still get to see me up there in the corner, too. <laughs> Actually, you know what, I'm going to minimize myself. There we go. All right. I don't want to go back. So, again, welcome to the Radical Relationship Relief Boot Camp. Sean Mashey here, and most of you know me by now. I am a paradigm shift author and teacher and coach, certified facilitator of the work of Byron Katie, as well as really specializing in prosperity through self-love and something I call self-solidarity. But what really is behind all that paradigm shift, um, I call it the reliable symmetry of happiness. I actually consider it to be a natural law because it is so dependable that whatever upsets you is holding the key to your path out of it. And that is what the first key is. 
because of the issues with my computer, I wasn't able to upload our new graphics that show the six keys to dependable peace and delicious connection. But I'm going to talk you through this first one anyway. This is a picture of me some time ago with my mom some time ago as well. And while we look really happy and close, we had a tumultuous time, especially as I got older and we started to separate from each other and um, so it was a really interesting journey that I finally came to completely see my role in it and see the ways that as an adult at least um, my unhappiness and even as a child was created by my own thinking by my beliefs about what I needed that um, she absolutely couldn't give me in those moments while she gave it to me in so many moments, the ones that weren't working for me. I, I couldn't do anything at the time um, but come up with the strategies to try to fix it for her or eventually later as an adult to blame her and feel angry but always clueless how to respond. And um, that's what happens with a lot of us that we, um, we pull these situations from childhood into our current relationships and they become such an amazing mirror to go back and heal whatever happened back then, no matter how together our parents were or how great our childhood or our situation is we come up with those strategies. And for me, they ended up, while my life looked so great on the outside in so many ways, I was just a mess on the inside and I was running on a drown and go, you know, working to please people to the extent that I really did make myself sick over time. And there were, there were other things going on with me too, but the emotional strain and the lack of real spiritual grounding, ability to have faith in what was unfolding for me and trust what showed up as happening for me instead of to me is something that I didn't get until after I lost my health and my job and my marriage all within the space of about nine months. And after after learning um, the work of Byron Katie and eventually becoming certified in it, I started to experience a paradigm shift that then I started to write about and try to break down what was really happening there. Um, how was it working with our brains? And what was the big change that happens in your life once you realize that whatever is upsetting you is there to set you free? So that first paradigm shift um, of what I call the reliable symmetry of happiness uh, is to seek the symmetry in whatever upsets you. Once you realize that you can harvest hidden riches from your judgments and your annoyances and your fears and turn that around to actually help yourself and get greater and greater peace and freedom every single time, then it's just such a different world. So I want you to think about, <laughs> I'm using this, this room actually looked much more black and horrible and moldy and yucky and decrepit than this when we bought the cottage that is now part of my retreat center. The cottage next door had this little workshop, which, which years ago was a chicken house. And there was so, the, the roof had gotten big holes in it, so it was just pouring down the walls. And it was completely black and moldy. And when we pulled the siding off, we could see that it was rotted through. The foundational pieces were completely rotted through at the base. There was really no foundation. It was just these little, this pegboard that was kind of holding up the walls so that the ne eventually a heavy snow would have made the whole thing fall. And so what we do when we're, when we're going in and taking care of this kind of yuck inside of ourselves, the ways that we made decisions that just aren't working for us anymore in our lives, the ways we see those we love, that we live with, the very people we fell in love with or married or had the greatest hopes for, our children, our parents, our bosses, the 
life in general starts to look kind of like this. You know? And so we tend to want to run away from that or cover it up or hide it or spray it with something. You know, we have all these strategies, but in truth, what we need to do is go in and really take a look and listen to what those little parts of us they, they came up with these strategies long ago that are intended to save us and to rescue us from our situation. And so those are very tenacious beliefs that we have, but they're just not working for us anymore. So as we harvest those beliefs, we get to clean things up. And it's like what I did with that room. This is now where I meet with clients. And this room is beautiful. And I went out, I replaced all those moldy walls and even the structural parts of the walls. And we got, we got, the windows really weren't windows. They were kind of just pieces of plexiglass that someone had stuck in there. Got these beautiful new casement windows. And um, it's just an amazing place. And we put stone on the outside of it. And while what we used to do was either have no boundaries or walls, what happens when you start to clean up the parts of your life is you've got beautiful, you know, the windows to the outside world that let light pour in and let love and you can come and go and you're in and out and people are in and out in some ways a metaphor for this, but it's a, a strong, solid structure on the inside and out that the, the insides match the outsides more than they used to. And then the outsides are also spectacular. The, the world you look out on st starts to look more beautiful and friendly. And the things that appear to be, used to be disastrous, now start to realize you have a, a trust that they're happening for you instead of to you. And that comes from questioning the thoughts. And once I did that, it was like everything changed. Life became much lighter and friendlier. And what ends up is we have true faith in what's unfolding. My definition of God changed into reality as it's showing up. Beyond that, what can I really know about what should be happening other than what my monkey mind tells me? And I realized that that was really the only source of the problem. So I no not longer needed to talk about the problems. I started to realize that what I have is what I need. And what, you can, what you'll be getting from this group is to trust what happens. You'll be finding your own innocence, no longer beating yourself up and seeing that everything you're doing and saying is, is perfect. It's just there to wake you up to anything that you would be telling yourself that's a problem. And that's what I talk about. That's what I mean when I say symmetry. Anything that hurts is holding within it this unique code for the undoing of your own pain. It's the, the law of inherent symmetry. It is absolutely holding what you need to unravel that pain and see that nothing is actually out of place in our world, that you get to just be with what is. But you can't just go with the spiritual party line and say, oh, yeah, you know, I believe it's all happening for me and the universe is abundant. And, you know, that's not the way it feels when you're gripped with fear or you're believing something bad is happening to your, one of your loved ones or that you've said or done something that's going to cause a big problem for yourself or others or that there just isn't enough of something or that you are too much of something. So there is just really, you know, it's the beginning of the end of fear. And for me, there's so much less codependence in my primary relationships. Um, and I don't, you know, even though I love what other people have to say, it's just kind of, you know, it's icing on the cake. I don't seem to seek self-help books and outside sources like I always used to. I was such a devotee of all of that. I'm sorry about background noise. It was so quiet when I started here, but students are coming and going in the next room now. So anyway, um, 
And I stopped blaming everyone for everything. It was a huge turnaround in my relationship with my mom so that I got to have the end, the last years of her life. We were so close and had so much fun and laughed a lot and undid whatever was done before that was all happening in my mind. And I just didn't, you know, I don't feel like a victim anymore. And that's what's going to be happening. You start to love your happy dreams and trust the outcomes. And get yourself out of the way, realizing that you're not the decider, that things are just showing up. And, um, you know, you have to, for the ways that you are like me, where the preaching, where the spiritual party line, where the dogma it just didn't work, you know, even reading Eckhart Tolle was great, but I would say, well, great, that's you, and I'm not there yet. <laughs> that just makes me feel worse. So this way, you, you know, I love this saying, your dogma ran over my karma. You know, I had to get it for myself, and I want you to do that too. So I won't be giving you advice. You have everything you need inside yourself. And so this paradigm shift will really start to grow inside you as you understand the nature of thought and reality and start to truly work through your painful situations. You know, we're going to stick with this, guys. You become part of this movement until it becomes common knowledge that there really are no outside enemies. So, you know, I'm, I'm living it. It's, it's Things have changed so much, and yet I'm still here in the trenches. And um, I let whatever hurts wake me up. And it's freed up so much energy, cleared up so many of my health problems, cured my insomnia almost immediately. You know, um, I've ended one relationship, but we still love each other so much. And I, I'm having this amazing love affair with myself and life, and now with you guys. So let's just move into a little meditation here. So I want you to just let yourself be supported. Just be with whatever shows up around you. What are you sitting on or lying on? Where are your feet? Where are your hands? And let yourself be breathed. Nothing to do. Let's do this. Let yourself be thought. It's the same as the breathing. It's happening to you. We're not in charge of our thinking. If we were, if we were in charge of our thinking and the emotions that come as cascading down as a result of it, we would never be unhappy or un upset. Notice we can't stop the thinking, but we can just be the observer of it. Who's really doing the thinking? You start to notice it's actually already programmed in there. Things happen and it triggers a, a response that was already set up in your brain. It's more like you're being thought. So you can actually shift into the role of the observer rather than the believer of your thinking. And then go even further into the role of the inquirer. One of our happiness hacks is called Beyond Mindfulness. And that's what I'm talking about. Not just noticing the thoughts. We're trying to distance from them or notice that they're not you, that they're not necessarily true, but actually let them teach you 
what it is you're wanting, which is often the exact opposite of what you think it is and what you think you need from others is often what you need to give yourself and them in order to be truly happy. And every emotional upset has a thought behind it. So it's not what's happening, it's what you're believing about it. And this programming is powerful. So when this happens, you react this way. It's just like, you know, we say, oh yeah, when it rains, I get a cold. You know, just like, really? And you know, yeah, you know, when your husband is this way, you always, and you say you as if it's, you know, it's like, wait, what do I do? So find a situation where you were upset with someone, where you were scared about what they were doing or saying. And see that situation in your mind. And I want you to know it's okay to stop the recording anytime so that you can really drop in here this entire work that we're doing is a meditation. It's really the only meditation that I've been very successful with that has allowed my mind to come back to a place of complete calm and open alertness and curiosity. And I see that every day with the people that I work with. So see that situation in your mind. It could be something, again, if you need to stop the recording, feel free. It could be something with a spouse. Try to have it be something, whether it's long in the past or childhood, or it could be yesterday, it could be even on this call. It could be right now, whatever you're telling yourself. But I want it to be a situation where it feels like something is happening to you. I don't want you to pick one where you're beating yourself up. And if you are beating yourself up, look below that and see, for example, where you might really be angry at me <laughs> or that the way we set this up so that it's not working for you. But we go right into turning it on ourselves because we learned early on that it wasn't safe to point the finger at those who were caretakers for ourselves. So, but I'd like it to be a clear situation where it feels like you're angry at someone or they're saying something hurtful to you. So see that situation in your mind. See the room. See, see where you are standing, sitting, talking on the phone, even emailing. You get in, I want you to find a place where you're having a big emotional charge about something. And you might still feel clueless about how to have handled that differently, or you might still be upset about it. Maybe you feel better now, but you know that there's a chance that that could happen again in the future, and you're kind of going around dreading that, that this person will say or do that thing again. Hold yourself right in the situation where you have the emotional charge. And don't pick the biggest thing that's ever happened in your life to start with. Maybe about a six, five or six, seven on this emotional scale of ten. See that person in front of you. Whatever it is, you were fine, and then something happened, and you, and then you're not fine, or you believe you're not fine. What happened? You could be even sitting in a chair or lying in bed and the thought hits about something that someone said or did. And that could be your situation. There might not be the other person present, but you have the memory of them present. And just feel the way you felt. Close your eyes and go there. It can be scary to go back to the feelings, especially given the old ways that we dealt with things. But it's even scarier to squash them because they end up 
they keep trying to come back and get our attention in other ways. Ultimately, we take it out on others and it goes all wrong when we get sick. These parts of us believe something is wrong and they're trying to save us. And if you feel bad, we're getting ready to really judge the person in front of you. And maybe you've gotten the spiritual party line that it's not okay to judge. We get that from the beginning, whatever our religious or other upbringing is. And yet our minds do judge. Our minds are actually programmed to judge. The part that ultimately became our ego is the part that originally was meant to make judgments about whether or not what is coming toward us is a saber-toothed tiger or a friendly being, something that's going to eat us or something that's going to, um, <laughs> that we're going to be able to eat and or is friendly or, um, you know, so that's the kind of real basic instincts that are running where our minds do create judgments. It's very black and white. It runs on electrical impulses. It generates hypotheses. But unless we are vigilant, we'll hear those hypotheses as saying, this is the way it is, or this is the way it was, or this is the way it will be. So let that upset part of you have a voice. We want to capture the whole story by writing down what comes to you. So I'm going to walk you through this, and we're going to use very specific language just to help capture the story, and this languaging will help you turn it around in a way that undo, that you know, rewires that pathway, the neural pathway that's been repeating over and over again and adding on to those situations from the past. So I'm hoping you have a pen or pencil or paper or go ahead and type this if that's helpful to you into your computer. Either open another window, put it in your phone, whatever works for you. Writing works for me for this one if you can do that. So fill in this blank about your, the person in your situation. We want to go ahead and judge them. I am upset with. You could say I'm angry with, I'm scared about, whatever it is. Right now we just want to leave it kind of general. I'm upset or scared with or about blank. Put the person's name. Or you can just put him or her or it. If you don't want to write this worksheet that you're afraid someone might find it later. But suppose something like that did happen. You know, this is a way of actually turning it around so that you're taking full responsibility for your reaction. The people in your lives will be delighted when they find out how much you're going to change your perceptions of them. They will want you to do more of these worksheets on them actually to get to get down to those true feelings that are scaring you. So I am upset with blank because they, he, she, it, what did they do? What's the real core problem? And stop the recording if you need to. Just pause it. So my example might be Remembering a time with my ex-husband when he come in with a bag of groceries and yet I'd be, you know, doing something and I've had a long day too and he would just set those down and then head back out or into watch TV, grab that remote, do something else. And I wanted him to come over and come up behind me and give me a kiss and be happy to see me and spend a moment paying attention to me. So I'm angry with him because, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this one right now as we, as we go. Because what, like what's the real problem here? Get down to what is your real, what are they doing that makes you feel like they're hurting you?
He doesn't care about me. He doesn't treat me the way I want to be treated. I said here, just to keep it to one concept. You can put more than one, but just keep one concept per sentence. And let's just keep it to a couple. So then the next one is we want to stick with this. You go back to the situation and run that video camera again and see what did you want them to do instead of what they did. I want him to, I want her to. How do you want them to change? Just go ahead and rant and rave a little bit on this one. And still try to keep them as separate concepts instead of and, 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 say. I want him to come up behind me and put his arms around me. I want him to ask how my day was. And then... Go ahead and pause if you need more time. Give that person some advice about what would be best for them. And what would be best for you and for all involved. They should or they shouldn't. In my case, he should know how much it means to me for him to just smile or touch me. He shouldn't just walk away and ignore me. He should know I had a long day too. He should help himself feel better as well by touching base with me and relaxing together. You know what, I actually skipped one of these. There we go, the slides were in the wrong order. So next, I want you to go into your heart and find the part of you that feels little and hurt, or just feels like you need something other than what you're getting. It might not be hurt at all, it might be furious. You might be scared. Write what it feels like that you really need from them for you to be happy and to feel completely loved and supported in that situation. And to get your problem solved, whatever it is. Maybe it's not about love and support at all. Maybe it's just you, you feel someone is standing in the way of your goal, what you need. So I need them to stop the recording if you need to. In my case, let me think. I need him to cherish me. You need him to see that I'm drowning and starving and lonely and scared in our marriage. I need him to really see me and to turn me around and face me and let me know that he'll never leave and that he cares what I need and that he supports what I want even when he doesn't necessarily agree with it. So stop the recording if you need to.
And now let's have some fun and, and let it all out. <laughs> Judge like you've never judged before. Be honest here and say what you really think about them. Not all the time. They might be a great, wonderful person. That's why it's so important to hold yourself right in the situation where you are angry, where you are really hurt, mad, sad. Write all the negative descriptors you can, adjectives or short phrases. They are what? In my case, he is really missing the big picture. Obsessed with other people's reactions to him. Not realizing what this does to me. Self-centered, uncaring, a jerk, an asshole. Oh my God, he sucks. Of course, he's an amazing guy, <laughs> but in those moments, that's what I'm talking about. You hold yourself in this situation because pretty soon, the very person in front of you isn't an amazing guy anymore. Pretty soon, these perceptions take over and the person you live with feels like the enemy feels like the source of all your problems, feels like someone who doesn't understand, care about, or support you at all. You don't feel like you see the life, life in the same way or that you, have, you share anything at all anymore. A lot of people that I've worked with have been at this point in their marriage and, and have turned things around. So whatever situation you're working with, go ahead and stop now and, and write it for yourself. Uh, this was just my example. And finally, think about what you dread encountering with them again. Write one thing about what you don't want them to ever do to you again, to do again. I mean, even if you don't believe they could ever stop doing what they're doing, Still, what is it you dread that they'll do again? And maybe write one about how it is you felt in that situation that you don't ever want to feel again. What it is, I don't ever want to experience blank with them again, with around this kind of situation. What is it you don't ever want to feel? I don't ever want to feel blank in their presence again. In my case, I don't want everyone to feel so dependent on someone else's love and approval. I don't want to, I don't ever want to feel so hopeless that this is never going to change. And when it comes to his behavior, I don't ever want to him to, to be in his presence when his overwhelm and annoyance with the world or with whatever's going on with him makes him miss me completely. What is it you don't ever want to experience again? Just use these words, I don't ever want to, and keep it pretty simple, short sentences again. So what you've done is what Byron Katie calls a judge your neighbor worksheet. Um, it's such a radical concept in a world where we tell ourselves that we aren't supposed to judge. So check out our boot camp page after this um, 
this event, this recording you're listening to, and you'll get a copy of Katie's official Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. So part of what we're learning in this boot camp is the work, the work of Byron Katie that I spent over six years becoming certified in and that I use very much in our deep situations with people. And then I also teach my own coaching and my own shortcuts that became of this kind of work um, that for me really encapsulated it enhanced whatever anyone is already doing no matter what religious or spiritual approach or counseling or whatever you've already done to try to shift yourself out of your pain this um this work can really often um, take you to the next level in a way that I don't think anything else can. It will, will get da you down to what's really going on and shift it and, and take care of it for good. Once you've questioned a thought, it's really done. Just doing this worksheet, just harvesting the thinking, which is what the seek the symmetry part of it is. The seek the symmetry step is to stop what you're doing Stop pointing the finger at the other. Stop waiting for life to change before you can be happy. And see how much you are hurting. Turn around and come back to yourself and look for the symmetry in what's happening because that's going to be the gift. And once you've been through a cycle of this and you start to realize that, like you can't know it for now, but right now it's just an act of trust. So just doing that often diffuses some of the emotional charge. So part of your homework between now and the next class is to really, really drop in to this kind of living meditation. And to start to love your thoughts. So that's your homework, is to start observing your thinking about every situation as a curiosity. Don't affirm over the thoughts. Just let them be and watch them. Catch yourself believing, oh, I shouldn't be thinking that, as you start to realize that the thoughts are the problem. And even catch yourself believing that you shouldn't be thinking that you shouldn't be thinking it. <laughs> so where are you scared? Where are you angry? Where are you sad, hopeless, helpless, feeling you need to control a person or situation to feel safe or to get what you need? So just like no judgments or corrections, treat all the thoughts and behaviors like innocent children. They really are. They're immature thinking. They're just trying hard. They can be cute, funny, adorable. We laugh so much in these groups and in the mastermind group and in my private sessions with people, and we, especially retreats, just starting to get in touch with what's really going on in there that we believe that's really the source of our own problem. So just start to notice them. Let them live, no matter how negative or judgmental they are. Adore them. They're trying to help you. But just don't believe everything they tell you. We're going to start to question them. And then I also want to know, when, when you, on the Facebook group that we have, I want you to start posting what kind of landed from you with this video and what you just aren't getting. And if possible, I'd like you to post what you just wrote out there, or at least bring it with you to the group. It's part of how we're going to get to know each other by hearing about our situations. So if you've written one of these about a situation that you feel is too private to share, that's okay. Um, maybe we'll go ahead on to our our group and download that worksheet and do another one. Or we may just do another one right there in the class where you can talk about a situation. But go ahead and put your takeaways from this video, your celebrations of what's starting to change, your challenges, your questions on our discussion and connection forum. Again, or if it's very personal, you can send it to me and we can walk through it in your session that you're going to have with me later. So that's where we end right now. And I just want to say hi again by stopping my screen share. It's going to come back to me here for a minute. Look, I'm sitting in this huge...
<laughs> so amazing. Uh, the craziness, the creativity, the energy, the ability to make life work that comes out of this kind of um, what happens. There's just, there's kind of no end to this free fall into love and letting life happen. And you get to see that there's like not a problem things just show up and they just help you get to know your wonderful creative mind and all the possibilities and the most incredible student showed up and gave me his password so that i could do this with you today um even though i was told that no only students can get in and no one will ever give you their password but this guy was just great and he stayed with me to make sure i was online and it's just you know that's what's going to happen is it's all happening for you and it's going to be a lot of fun it just gets better and richer and deeper over time all right love you and i will see you very soon on our call all right take care bye